One of the situations that has really frustrated me over my years of bass fishing is dirty water. You know, when I was first beginning, kind of learning the ropes, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to approach dirty water. I didn't know what lures to throw. And of course, I didn't know how bass would even find my lures in water that is this dirty, as you see behind me right now. But in this video, we're going to dive into the topic of my top five plus or minus uh, lures when it comes to fishing dirty water in both lakes and ponds. Let's talk about it. How's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. I love teaching you guys how to become better bass anglers. In today's video, we're gonna cover kind of the, uh, the opposite topic of what I talked about a few videos ago, which was my top five plus or minus uh, lures for clear water, like ultra clear water, whether you're fishing in, in, in a super grassy lake where of course the grass filtrates the water, makes it clean, uh, you have zebra mussels, or your lakes are just naturally deep and clean. I talked about my top lures in those situations. So if you guys missed that video, it'll be up here in the corner as well as linked down below and pinned to the top comment. So I would highly recommend you guys watch that. But if you guys don't have much clear water around you, let's say that you are uh, somewhere in the country with uh, a silty bottom, very, very uh, muddy lakes, clear water videos don't really apply to you guys and don't really help you become better bass anglers. And so I traveled to Oklahoma purposefully to fish lures in dirty water. That way, of course, I could get better at it and I could also teach you guys what I am learning. But the list of lures that I have today for you guys, is one that I've had kind of for a long time, this has not really changed. I don't see it changing anytime soon, but this here is my top five lures when it comes to fishing in dirty water. But before we jump into the lures, I have to talk a little bit about kind of, you know, fish ecosystems and, and biology as I always do in my videos. And so when I talked about clear water, I said that fish, the bass, what I'm talking about, uh, feed mostly based on sight in clear water. So you have to throw lures and colors that are very, very natural, that imitate exactly what those fish are used to seeing and eating in real life. But in dirty water, the fish still have to eat something. And so they have to use different senses in order to feed on their prey and of course, get your lure in their mouth. And so using the, the lures in clear water, yeah, you might be able to catch some bass in, in, in dirty water, but you're not gonna be near as effective as the list that I'm gonna show you right now. Based on the fact that, you know, the fish have to feed more based on vibration and silhouettes. Uh, the lures that I'm throwing are definitely not as natural colored and they are definitely mostly moving baits. I only have one non-moving bait in here and you can actually choose to move this bait through the water column in a fast way if you desire. And so that's just the way that I fish in dirty water. I usually don't slow down in dirty water. Occasionally I'll go out deep and throw uh, a Carolina rig and kind of drag it slowly, but most of the time in dirty water I am fishing fast and that's because I want to be effective. And so lure number one when it comes to fishing dirty water is going to be your bladed jig. So the bladed jig or the chatterbait as it is known, kind of the Kleenex brand name, is definitely my favorite lure when it comes to fishing in dirty water. Now I do throw white and black and blue in dirty water. And the reasoning for that is because, like I mentioned, fish, of course, want to feed based on vibration and that you know, vibrating little, little, whatever this is called, metal bill thing. Uh, it, of course, it creates vibration and allows those fish to hone in on it. But both white and black and blue, while they may be kind of on opposite sides of the color spectrum, white is, you know, shad, black and blue is whatever the heck that represents. Um, they both have a very flashy uh, persona in the water. So, so, you know, I throw white in both clear water and murky water, but I usually only throw black and blue when it comes to murky or dirty water. Uh, and the reason why I throw this is like I mentioned, it, it creates vibration. It is a bigger profile. Most of the baits that I'm throwing in today's video, uh, talking to you guys about with dirty water are bigger profile because I want the fish to be able to find it. If someone turns off your lights and they want you to find your lamp, you kind of have to like reach around. And of course, if you have a bigger lamp, it's going to be easier for you to find your lamp in the dark. That was kind of a dumb example, but that's exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to bass. They want to find your lure. And if you're throwing a tiny little crappie jig, they're not gonna find that thing. And so you have to throw at least a little bit larger sized lures in order to get those fish's attention. And of course, once you find fish in an area, you can slow down, pick it apart with a smaller lure. But 
I rarely ever slow down in dirty water. That's just kind of the way that I fish. So you may be different than I am. I don't like to slow down when it comes to dirty water. So lure number one is the uh, the vibrating jig. This is the Strike King Thunder Cricket. I will have this, uh, the lures, all the lures that I talk about, as always linked in the description below for you guys to check out. Please purchase your your uh, your tackle th through those links below. It uh, tracks your your cart to my account and it helps me make affiliate revenue. So make sure you guys are doing that. But that is lure number one for dirty water. Lure number two for dirty water is going to be very similar, and that is a spinnerbait. The spinnerbait, my arch nemesis for so long on the channel. I hated this thing, but I have started to love it more and more as I've traveled, especially when it comes to dirty water. I don't think there is a better lure for every scenario than a spinnerbait in dirty water. Now here I have my custom color. Now I don't know if this video will come out before, or after uh, my video where I fish with this, but I catch the absolute tar out of them on this thing. And so if I if I have that video done, it'll be linked below. But uh, I have spray painted the head of this orange to stick out a little more in this dirty water. Uh, but like I said, most colors I'm throwing are gonna be brighter, more flashy. So, you know, spinner baits, I don't usually throw black and blue. It's mostly chartreuse uh, and orange and kind of bright, you know, red, bright colors is usually what I like to throw. And then I'll, oftentimes I will throw in dirty water this here is also a, uh, a custom painted one. This here is a double Colorado leaf spinnerbait with a longer skirt that kind of covers up the trailer hook down there. And I have the uh, the head and the main blade spray painted orange. So if you guys missed that video, like I said, it's a pretty insane video. And I talk about why I spray paint those orange and just kind of a, a general synopsis. I do that in dirty water because it helps get those fish's attention. And I feel like most people don't throw that color. So if the fish have seen a ton of spinnerbaits of the same color and you throw something that's a little bit different, especially a little more flashy, uh, those fish are oftentimes going to react to that. So the spinnerbait is lure number two. I love this thing. And uh, of course, over any sort of vegetation, over any sort of brush or, or laydowns or sticks, even over general slate rock or chunk rock like we have here in Oklahoma, spinnerbait works great. So that is lure number two. Lure number three for dirty water, keeping along with the moving bait category, is going to be the square bill crankbait. My favorite color of the square bill crankbait when it comes to dirty water is chartreuse black back. This here is a Strike King KVD 1.5. We all know, we all we all know it, we all love it. It is a fantastic bait. I have this thing on some 10 pound fluorocarbon. This is Seaguar Abrazex. I hardly ever throw a square bill on anything else besides 10 pound, unless I'm in like some heavy cover situations, but most of the time I'm throwing it on 10 pound line. And the reason for, for why I chose three different reaction baits, the, the chatter bait, the spinner bait, and the, uh, the square bill is because they all fit a little bit different of a mold. So I'd say the, uh, the Thunder Cricket fits more of the grass, spinnerbait more wood, and the square bill more rocks. So I'm not just applying this to lakes, I'm applying this to ponds as well. I have caught endless bass on a square bill in a pond, and that is probably my number one pond lure that I always have tied up when I'm out of pond, is a square bill crankbait. So I'm gonna have a video coming out very soon about how to fish this in the post spawn. I did make a video about how to fish it in the fall, but my location changes a little bit with this uh, in the spring, and also my colors change. So that is the square bill crankbait, and that is lure number three. Lure number four is going to be none other than the buzzbait. I had to throw a topwater on this list because uh, I love topwater, and so why not? I love throwing a buzzbait in dirty water. You know, you can throw a frog, you can throw a spook, a walking bait, you can throw a popper, but I think when it comes to covering water like I have been with the first three lures I mentioned, there's nothing better than a buzzbait. And a buzzbait, I think, causes more commotion. It works in both slack water and in some chop. I think a buzzbait is just one of the most versatile lures in both all white or all black. Right here, I have the skirt taken off and I super glued on a uh, um, some kind of soft plastic little you know topwater toad here. And like I said, white or black doesn't really matter because they both create a silhouette. Now you're gonna find on your lakes and ponds which one works better, but I would always say a buzzbait is the number one lure for dirty water on the top water side of things. And the fifth and final lure, finally one that is not a, uh, a total moving bait, and that is the jig. 
The jig is a wonderful, wonderful lure, not just in clear water. You know, I love throwing a green pumpkin or watermelon color jig in clear water, but a black and blue or, or peanut butter and jelly color jig uh, with a Strike King Menace or Rage Craw trailer is definitely one of my favorite ways to catch bass in dirty water. Now, you're going to have to know for sure before throwing this thing if there are bass in the area. Because like I said, with dirty water, usually you have to cover a little bit more water. You have to fish a little faster to find the fish. But once you find an area, especially especially if it's laydowns, grass, or docks, there is nothing better than a jig. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big fish catcher. You know, you can put a bigger trailer on there. You could put a, uh, the structure bug on this jig here. This is the Outcast Tackle uh, Stealth Fighter jig. This thing is just a big fish catcher. Uh, that, that's all I can say about it. Uh, of course, you can skip it. You can flip it. You can, you can cast it up in some grass and kind of and kind of swim it out. It is such a versatile lure. And in dirty water, there is nothing better for catching big bass, in my opinion, than a jig. So that is all the information that I have for you guys today. Hopefully, you enjoyed and you learned something. If you did, drop a comment down below. And if you have some questions please feel free to message me on instagram i'm always responding to dms or leave in the comment section below and before you guys leave please hit the like button it'll help my channel out so much if you guys hit that like button comment something down below i don't care what it is and subscribe to the channel because i want you guys along all my adventures with me i'm gonna have a ton of super fun videos not just instructionals but challenges and fun stuff coming up here soon now that fishing is getting a lot more fun down in the south so uh we'll see y'all next time on trf